Good afternoon. I am really delighted to be here to address uh, the faculty members who are participating in um, engineering mechanics. So, I am going to talk about uh, some topics that are very close to my heart, IT literacy through open source software. Uh, IT of course, refers to a lot of things, not just programming, it also refers to simulation. Um, buying train tickets online and stuff like that. So, we are actually going to talk about that and how to do it through open source software. And uh, I am going to talk about two methods that we have adopted to spread this. One is um, uh, through something called textbook companion. The other one is uh, spoken tutorials. I will explain both of these. So, I have four parts in my talk. These are the four things and I will begin with free and open source software. I will first explain why free and open source software is important to us. Okay. This is one of the most important slides in my talk. Um, first of all, it is important to realize that the commercial software is very expensive. Uh, some of us may not realize this because um, Software is not uh, very expensive for academic institutions and um, whereas, it becomes a lot more expensive. And of course, um, um, you know it is not clear uh, how many of our, um, well um, it is not clear um, whether we even know the price of uh, software, especially our students. Um, there are heavy penalties if unauthorized software is used by industry. I have some stories here, I would like to share them with you. First of all, this story from Italy, um, there was a software raid in uh, one of the Italian companies and uh, during the raid, they identified one illegal copy of Microsoft Office and there was an out of court settlement as per the, so that there would be no court case filed against this company. and the. Uh, out of court settlement was this company would count the total number of machines it had all over the world and multiply that by per copy cost of uh, MS office and that would be given as damages. And as a result this company ended up paying 20 million dollars as damages for having used one and only one illegal copy of Microsoft office. Um, and of course, 20 million dollars uh, correspond to about 130, 135 crore in the current exchange rate. Now, uh, the next one I want to tell you about an experience we had in this very same room. In this very same room, I was teaching uh, the controls part of the embedded systems course uh, at IIT Bombay. Uh, there were about 25 students in the class. Um, they were pursuing MTech and uh, PhD and I asked the students how many of them had used Scilab. I was going to use Scilab in this course and out of 25 students, only one raised his hand. And in fact, I became uh, really angry and uh, so, I, in fact, I scolded him um, why he used Scilab, why did he not use MATLAB like everybody else. Then he told me that he worked in an embedded systems company um, before coming to IIT for higher studies. That is, out of the 25 students, he was the only one who had gone and worked in a company before coming to IIT for higher studies. And um, whereas everybody else, all the other 24 students had come directly after their studies. Uh, either they had done bachelors, they were doing masters or they were done masters and they came for PhD and they had not worked outside. This single person worked in an embedded systems company in Pune and he wanted to use 
MATLAB. And uh, of course, it was a startup, uh, small company. Probably it had only some four or five people in the whole company. Their annual turnover itself would have been just about five to ten crore. And so his boss told him that a copy of MATLAB for them would be very expensive. Um, can somebody guess? I see that some of you are responding in this. Um, can somebody guess what is the, what will be the price of MATLAB for uh, this embedded systems company? You can reply on chat. What is the cost of Scilab? Okay, somebody says 1 lakh. Okay, somebody says 2 lakh. All right. So, uh, somebody says freeware, sorry I am not talking about Scilab, sorry I am talking about MATLAB. What is the cost of MATLAB for industry? He wanted to use MATLAB, his boss told him MATLAB was too expensive. Okay. So, people have said 23 lakhs, 7.5 lakh, 25 lakh, 10 lakh, 5 lakh, okay. fine, fair enough, you have sent, uh, you have given enough feedback. Uh, his boss told him that, uh, remember it is an embedded systems company. It is an embedded systems company. Finally, whatever they develop should be embedded in an IC and should be delivered. Okay. That is whatever they create using MATLAB should be delivered. And uh, he wanted to remember, he wanted to use MATLAB in his company. And his boss told him MATLAB was too expensive. And what is the cost of MATLAB? That is the question. So, um, his boss told him a copy of MATLAB for the unlimited use that they had in mind would cost 2 crore rupees, 2 crore. Okay. Um, so, somebody has written 99 dollars, not at all true, 2 crore rupees is what was told by his boss. And so, he told this, uh, this student, this employee that uh, MATLAB was too expensive, they could not afford, um, he could use C, uh, Java and so on and so forth. But if he insisted on MATLAB, he could resign and go, he did not want to. Okay. Hindustan Lever, such a famous company, has only one copy of MATLAB. Anyone who wants to use MATLAB should come at 7.13 in the morning and occupy the chair. Nobody else can use MATLAB on that day. Wipro also has one copy of MATLAB. Those who want to use MATLAB should block their slot. I want to use it next Thursday 4 to 5. You block it now so that you get to use it. Okay. So, uh, our because of this, uh, so uh, I asked, uh, uh, we did a workshop with uh, Wipro people, uh, Mission 10X people uh, on virtual labs, single body to system lab. And I asked this person whom I was working with, what would Wipro do if somebody brought an illegal copy of MATLAB within their premises? So, he said three things. One, he will be dismissed. Two, he will be put in jail. Third, three, there will be a court case. Okay. So, why did Wipro, why should Wipro do all this? Why do you think Wipro should all do all this? Heavy penalty, they possess one copy only. Okay. Well, actually I have, I would ask this. Okay. So, the, actually uh, I ask, how many computers do you think Wipro has. Remember the Italy story, what happened when there was one illegal software, right. So, um, so that is the reason Wipro will go bankrupt if they ap apply that rule. So, because of this our small and medium scale enterprises do not use any software, commercial software is very expensive and they are not aware of open source software. We do not teach them in colleges. We do not teach our students how to use. Commercial software is like a book that they cannot take outside our college premises. Okay. This makes small companies uncompetitive and there is no alternative to FOSS. Remember, this is a very important slide. There is no alternative to FOSS, especially when you go to industry. Okay. But there are problems with open source software and this is possibly one reason why people do not use open source software, it is that good documents are missing, 
people do not know how to use them and then there is a lack of support, wrong impression about the quality. So, we decided in our project that we would address these issues, these three we would address. Okay. Now, I am going to explain the procedure that we followed to address these issues using Scilab. Scilab is open source software, it is equivalent to MATLAB. Okay. So, I want to talk about that. It is a very good substitute, substitute for MATLAB. It has about 95 percent compatibility with MATLAB. It also has a, it also has a, a tool called XCOS. It is a great replacement for Simulink. So, Scilab and XCOS together can be used to uh, in the place of MATLAB and Simulink. It also has, uh, it, of course, it is free and open source, it is easy to use, it has excellent computational en environment. Whatever good tools that are available in MATLAB are also available in Scilab, for example, Inpack, IcePack, LawPack, same as MATLAB, these are all computational engines. These are the ones that ensure that the final result is correct, the computation happens fast and so on. And there are also, there are software packages that are not available for MATLAB, things like Docile, ODE Pack and so on. Okay. Because, because of the licensing, because some software could say that if any other software uses this, that software should also become free. So, commercial software will not want to use that. Okay. How reliable is uh, software? How reliable is Scilab? I do not know if anybody knows about uh, CNES. CNES, you know, is uh, Francis Isro. Um, okay. And you may not, even if you do not know CNES, you would know the product of, popular product of CNES. It, uh, they launch Arian rockets. Uh, CNES relies on Scilab for many critical calculations. Okay. So, how do I know this? Well, actually in the world's uh, first ever Scilab user conference, um, there was um, on 1st July 2009, I was asked, uh, I was invited as a keynote speaker and uh, the Scilab team paid my airfare. I went there. I was a keynote speaker and, and I talked about the national mission on education through ICT. Okay. And there a senior manager of CNES gave a talk. I have downloaded that talk. Let me see if I can uh, get that for you. Okay. So, this uh, senior manager's name is uh, Cherry Martin of CNES. He gave a talk use of Scilab for space mission analysis and flight dynamics activities. So, what is Scilab used for? Let me see if I can make this slightly bigger, so you can read it a little more easily. So, he says, Scilab is now widely used in CNES in various engineering fields such as telecommunications, RF analysis, navigation, attitude control systems. And then he says, this present, uh, presentation explains how Scilab is used at CNES. And then he talks about, he went on talking about how in how many different ways Scilab is used. And let me go to the last slide. Okay. So, he says Scilab is widely used within CNES flight dynamics departments. It is used for all kinds of things, orbit propagation, orbit geometry, reference frames and models, etcetera, etcetera. Okay. So, his name is Terry Martin, CNES. If you just do a web search on this, you will locate this uh, PDF file, it is available on the internet. So, uh, you know that many of our satellites were placed in orbit by Arian rockets and Arian rockets themselves were launched based on calculations from Scilab. So, obviously, if Arian rockets can be launched with Scilab, we can very well use Scilab for our classroom activities. Uh, this is the talk that I talked about. Okay. So, let us uh, get back. Uh, so, this is, this is to tell you, if somebody comes and tells you, Scilab is buggy, do not use it, do not believe them. Okay. Um, 
uh, Scilab is great software. So, I am going to use Scilab to explain to you the things that we are doing to promote open source software. Okay. What are the problems with open source software? Good documents are missing, there is a lack, lack of support and wrong impression about the quality. One of the early projects that we started to address this difficulty was the textbook companion project. So, what is a textbook companion project? Basically, uh, I will first tell you the motivation as to uh, why we started this project for documentation. Remember, we are trying to get documentation for open source software and creation of documents is a very difficult task. You need people who are mature, people who are good in English, who do not make mistakes, who do not make spelling mistakes, do not make grammatical mistakes. And um, you also need people who understand the subject, right? but then these people are very few. They also cost a lot of money. So, how do we do this for open source software? We have lot of students of course. So, what I thought was why do not we use students to create to, to address this documentation issue. Okay. So, unfortunately students are uh, weak in documentation. You ask them to write a code, they will write, but ask them to write a report on it, they are going to do a bad job. So, we came up with this, I said let me see if we can solve an inverse problem. What is the inverse problem? Ask the students to create code for existing documents. Okay. So, that is what I have, students can create code, but not write documents. So, we solve the inverse problem, good textbooks are good documents. So, we can say uh, if you take a good textbook, people spend a lot of time to write um, uh, good textbooks and in fact, I spent uh, 10 years uh, writing my book digital control. In fact, it created a lot of problems at home. Um, so, in fact, I have promised my wife, I have promised my wife that I will not write textbooks anymore. Uh, because it would take a lot of my time. Uh, people spend a lot of time writing good textbooks. Um, so, if there is a good textbook, it has, it has good solved problems, why do not we take the code and write, uh, why do not we take solved examples and for them write Scilab code. Okay? In other words, if you execute Scilab code, it should give the answer given here. Okay? Uh, let me see if I can, uh, in fact, I will show you shortly what I mean by this. These are known as textbook companions and good students from most colleges can do this. Um, let me see if I can, I have already opened this website. I have gone to this website called cloud.scilab.in. I hope you can see this. right? Now, what I want you to do is to select, uh, select a book, I am going to execute one of these books, can somebody select something? So, should I take something in uh, fluid mechanics? Okay, because uh, many of you are from mechanical engineering. So, let me take uh, fluid mechanics. Okay. And I have lot of books on this. Would you want to select a book now? Can you see it? So, should I select uh, Douglas? Okay, if you somebody has said seven, book number seven. What is seven? Okay, fluidization engineering by Daiso and Levenspiel. Okay. So it says then which chapter? Okay. So which chapter? Okay, chapter 9, solid movement, mixing, segregation and staging. Okay. What example? Vorticity, somebody says vorticity. Anyway, let me just take one of them. Okay. You can see that I have made the uh, font very large. Let me make it small, so that you can see that there is code. 
okay, then I will make it bigger. Okay. Now, let me execute it. So, when I execute, okay, when I execute, it actually sends this data to um, it sends data to the cloud, which is in uh, Bangalore in this case, Garuda cloud is something that we are using. But anyway, uh, this is all available for all of you, you can go and uh, try it out later. What I will do is let me take another example, so that I can show some uh, pictures also. Let me take uh, control theory, let me take automatic control systems, let me take uh, frequency domain analysis, let me take an example, let me take body plot. Okay. So, here is the program, you can see that there is a program for this problem, for this book, okay, this is the topic, this is the book, this is the chapter, this is the specific example. Okay. Let me execute this. What I will do is I will come back, you can all try it out, this is cloud.scilab.in and if you have good internet access, uh, it will work. Okay. Uh, in case you do not have uh, uh, internet, you want to access this, all the books are available here. You see this textbook companion project and if you press this, it says completed books. Let us go to completed books. Okay. Once again, it gives lots of topics. So, let us go to fluid mechanics, it says all these things are available. Let us take this uh, Douglas. Okay. Here is a book, author, contributor, who is the contributor? Chakra B Tech, J Chakra B Tech, others IIT Bombay. So, we can take some other book. Let me see Fox and McDonald, for example. So, this is written by Iswar Prasad, B Tech, student, mechanical engineering, NIT, Trichy. Uh, and the college teacher who mentored him is Professor Shiv Prasad Shivraj Deshmukh. Um, well, actually, he is our student who did this mentoring. But then, generally, we for every contributor, we expect the college teacher to uh, be the mentor. Um, and then, let me just see now you can download all the examples of the entire book. Okay or you can download the PDF file of the entire book or you can choose a chapter. So, it is possible when you play around with this, you will realize that you can actually uh, have lots of things. Uh, now, you can download all the examples of the entire chapter, okay, download PDF works, you can see this uh, coming down here and it says all files have finished downloading. Let me click this. Here it is. So, this is what I downloaded just now, Scilab Textbook Companion for Introduction to Fluid Mechanics by Fox and McDonald, by Iswar Prasad, whoever created it. Here is a description of the book. Okay, this is the thing that I downloaded, let me make it bigger. Unfortunately, this font is not very good, let me just go to first page, oh, I made it very big. Okay. This is what I downloaded, book details. Okay. So, I can say that here it is. Now, supposing I am going through a book, going through this book and I am going through example 3.01, uh, 3 then all I have to do is to click this. It will immediately take me to example 301, make it bigger so you can actually see it. Okay. So, this whole thing is a 116 page book as you can see in the top, right. The whole thing is a 116 page book, okay. So, what we did was, um, let me come back to my talk. I wanted to give you a flavor of this uh, textbook companion project and um, some people say, uh, can we 
able to modify any complex system for the design purpose using Scilab. Yes, you can do everything. Example, gear dynamics, of course, you can do it. Text is not clear, please share through desktop sharing, that I cannot do. Um, some people say that it is very good. Um, so, here is an example, we did an internship, internship project during the summer of 2010, fluid mechanics by Fox and McDonald, control system design by Smarajit Ghosh, engineering mathematics by Krasik, three more created by IIT Bombay students. Um, so, when we did a pilot, we found that one student can complete one textbook companion in one month. Okay. So, good students from most colleges can do this. Students from all colleges can participate in this project. Um, I have some, so uh, what is the procedure? One can choose any standard textbook, code the worked out examples into Scilab, get the correctness certified by the subject expert, get honorarium and they get rupees 10,000 for uh, students. Uh, for the mentors uh, who are often college teachers, in fact, all of you can become mentors. You can ask your, the brightest student in your class to create textbook companion and we give you an honorarium of rupees 5,000 rupees. And uh, we give summer win, uh, winter internship to create textbook companion. All the details are in our website scilab.in. Okay. Uh, how to participate in that is available in our website. So, for example, if you see here on the left hand side, it says internship, guidelines for coding, honorarium, flowchart, completed books. So, flowchart actually tells you how to do that, how to participate in that is also given here. How the students can um, get internship is also explained here. So, textbook companions are community developed documentation for FOSS. The, we have a large number of books. In fact, um, we completed 200 books, in progress 200. Uh, we are spending 10,000 we are giving to the student, 5,000 we are giving to the faculty member and then we have our own administrative work. Uh, so, that actually kind of doubles this, but then in 30,000 rupees we are able to give this, which you can even execute remotely. Okay. So, every textbook companion is available as a PDF file, it can be downloaded free of cost from scilab.in, can be printed as a book as well. And then to understand this, you need the original textbook. For example, let me show you, let me go back to this uh, book. For example, if you want to understand this book, understand this code, you need the book. right? So, we give only code after code after code, okay. example 3.01, example 3.01D, 3.03 and here is the result. Okay. If you run Scilab, this is what you would get 3.03, 4, so on and so forth. Right? So, because we um, do not reproduce anything from the textbook, there is no copyright violation. Okay. So, I already demonstrated this on error.cloud. Of course, uh, we did this for Scilab, but we can extend this for other FOSS systems also, other open source software also. Okay, at this point, uh, we will just see whether we can extend this. I mean, what we can extend this. I want to go to the next topic now. What are the FOSS activities at IIT Bombay? By the way, FOSS stands for free and open source software. We are working on Python, working on open form. Um, how many of you use uh, Fluent, which is a computational dynamics, uh, fluid dynamics software? Okay. I think CFD is, uh, uh, is taught in most mechanical engineering departments. right? Right. So, this open form is an amazing open source equivalent and then I am going to explain to you later how we can conduct workshops for you. Right. Um, it is FOSS alternative to Fluent, that means you can legally download and use it. And if there are any electronics uh, engineers amongst you, we have uh, a software called OSCAD, which is a FOSS alternative to ORCAD. 
open formal for computer science people and then we are also working on uh, giving a false alternative to lab view ok. Lab view some of you might know is used for data acquisition and control ok. Python is a very good uh, software that we support at IIT Bombay. It is a very powerful programming language equivalent to C. In fact, CBSE has introduced it in their curriculum ok. We can learn um, uh, even if there is no uh, much of not much of prior programming background. It is very popular it is used in uh, MIT in Boston, uh, UT, Austin etcetera. CBSE has introduced uh, Python. And then I already told you OSCAD is a replacement for ORCAD. Uh, it is available through OSCAD.in. Uh, you can tell your uh, friends in electronics department, electrical engineering department and instrumentation engineering department to try out this software OSCAD.in. OSCAD okay, now, for you let us see whether I can go to cfd.fossi.in because uh, you are all mechanical engineers or chemical engineers you are likely to be interested in fluid mechanics. Uh, so, this is the computational fluid dynamics software called uh, open form, but the way you look at it is go to cfd.fossi.in and then you can see a lot of things are there home features downloads ok. Uh, I was looking for spoken tutorials. So, it is actually available already if I click this. So, for example, I can even play this. Hello and welcome to the spoken tutorial on modeling turbulent flow in a lid driven cavity using open foam. In this tutorial, I will show you solving turbulent case in open foam and plotting streamlines in para view and so on. Right? To record this tutorial, I am using Linux operating system Ubuntu it. version 12 0 and press enter or type ls and press enter ok. So, uh, let me just see uh, flow this is the turbulent flow this is flow over flat play simulating Hagen Poiseuille flow in open form and so on. So, these are available, but there it is also available in fact, we have um, in says for basic level open form tutorials click here these are advanced tutorials ok I think it is come ok. This is our website which I am going to show later I will show you I will take this opportunity to explain to you how to locate our videos ok. For example, I was trying I was showing you something from open form you can see this here open form in what language of course, it is available only in English at this point. So, look, let me locate the tutorials. So, all the 12 tutorials come the first one says installing and running second one is says, says creating simple geometry, creating curved geometry, simulating flow, supersonic flow, 2 D laminar flow, turbulent flow, how to do all of this in open form is explained here ok. Um, so, I would encourage all of you to oh by pressed it installing and running. So, you can Hello actually see and this. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on installing and running open form and para view. In this tutorial, I will show you how to install and run to solve a lead driven cavity case. To record this tutorial, I am using Linux operating system I can even make Ubuntu it full screen version 10.04, okay. open form version 2.1.0, I can of course go para view version 3.0. Little Please advance. visit our website on this scroll down, it tells you how to install it. In the command terminal, okay. type mkdir space dash p of the open form website. Okay. Copy so, here is uh, CD I am just going through fast. ABC I do not expect you to understand end. this, but I want you to know how to use it. Okay, let me see whether he has some figures. Okay, there is some figure. Scroll down the object inspector menu and go to mesh parts. Okay. Uncheck internal mesh. So, you can see that and um, click apply. how to do this. Okay. So, I told you about open form. 
uh, about Scylla we have already seen quite a bit, open formal for formal verification of software and hardware and then we are also uh, building a FOSS alternative to LabVIEW. We have open source hardware, um, we also have a hardware project where our students are working on it. So, this is, uh, so uh, I talked to you about the, uh, about two activities, one is the textbook companion and the second one is, um, uh, the second one is um, spoken tutorial, okay. Textbook companion you have already seen, now about uh, um, spoken tutorial you saw, but I will give little more information on spoken tutorial, okay how we can download the PDF format of books on cloud scilab dot in, please explain, okay. Um, okay, I will see whether I can explain that. So, actually this is where you are supposed to download PDF. Is there any quiz? Yeah, there is a quiz uh, for people who undergo our workshop, I will explain that. Uh, do you have any plan for open source workshop in future? Um, we are ready to conduct workshops, I am going to explain that shortly. Could you guide on any open source software finite element analysis, which could substitute high end software similar to the one you have for CFDS? Yes, look at this uh, open form, open form is that software, we can conduct workshops for you. What else, um, will there be any training course for CFD, yeah we will conduct a workshop on open form for you. Uh, I am going to explain to you how to do that. So, I am going to uh, cloud.scilab.in, it is a lot faster now. So, I was going to show you control theory. Look, select a chapter. Okay, let me just see how do I download. Okay, you see that uh, the plot has come. Okay, if I if I want, I can download it. Okay, I think right click, it will probably come and say copy image, save images, and so on and so forth. So all that is possible. So, let me go back, uh, I think I have to go here, okay. So, here PNG file, I close this, come here, okay. Now, for example, I can uh, change the value here. So, instead of 2500, suppose I want to make it 5000, okay. Let me exit. So, now I got some other plot. But you can see here now, you can see here now it is 5000 because I made it 5000, right. So, that works and uh, of course, um, you can write your own code here. Let me just see if I can do that. Let me delete this and then I can say 4, uh, well, yeah, 4 plus 2 is okay. Execute. It gives answer as six. Then I can say things like a equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero. Then I say determinant of a. Then calculate the eigenvalues using spectrum command and then execute, it gives the answer, right. So, actually uh, in cloud.scilab.in, uh, you can carry out your own calculation, but you can also carry out many of these calculations. Let me uh, go back to the slide, okay. I am going to uh, talk to you about uh, spoken tutorials in the remaining time. And I am going to tell you how our team is glad to organize workshops for you. And uh, because um, 
because of the shortage of time in this, we actually wanted to conduct a Scilab workshop as a part of this, but then we found that it was uh, too tense, that you had already too many things to teach. So, what we uh, decided was that I will give an overview of whatever we are doing and then we will tell you how to participate in this and then you can, uh, you can uh, contact us. So, I am going to explain to you how to do that. Okay. What is the spoken tutorial? Um, well, actually I can create a demo also. Let me do a small demo for you, uh, how to create a spoken tutorial. It is actually very easy. Uh, I am going to use a recording software for doing this. Uh, I am going to record a part of the screen uh, and I am going to do this using Scilab. So, I am going to record this part of it. Let me uh, start the recording. Um, good afternoon, welcome to this demonstration on the creation of a spoken tutorial. Let me create a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0. Let me create, let me calculate the eigenvalues using the spectrum command. Uh, let me create a 3D plot. Okay, I will bring it inside. I think that will be good enough to get an idea. Thanks for joining. Goodbye and Jai Hind. So, when I do that, uh, I have already created this uh, tutorial 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0. Let me create, let me calculate the eigenvalues using the spectrum command. Uh, let me create a 3D plot. Okay, I will bring it inside. I think that will be good enough to get an idea. Thanks for joining. Goodbye and Jai Hind. Okay. So, you notice that, um, that it is extremely easy. Whatever I created, in fact, um, you know, this is something that I can. Uh, um, good afternoon. In. Welcome to this demo. I can advance so that you know that I am not talking. 3D plot. It is a recording and I created that recording for you okay, in front of I'll you. Okay, I will bring it inside. So, this is how a spoken tutorial is created. In case you are interested in creating a tutorial, uh, I can show you where it is available. In case some of you want to know how to create a tutorial using popularly available software. So, we have something called spoken tutorial technology and we will do it only in English. Okay. So, for example, what is the spoken, how does one create it using Cam Studio? By the way, Cam Studio is available on Windows. So, you can create it using this, right. Okay. <clears throat> now, I told you uh, about uh, training. In fact, now that I am here, if you come here, you see this workshops, certificates, organizing workshops, you click that. And uh, let me make this slightly bigger, so that you can see this. And if you come down, you would see who is handling these workshops for different states. For example, for West Bengal and Odisha, Payal Mukherjee, for Goa, it is Tripti More, Gujarat, Madhukriti, Srivastava, phone number is given for all of these people. Through them, we conduct all workshops, including open form, including Scilab we can conduct it in your own college for your own students. right? So, what is a spoken tutorial? It is an audio video tutorial of 10 minute duration. It is created for self learning. It is a screencast. Whatever seen on the screen and spoken can be recorded, which is what I demonstrated to you. I recorded, I created a matrix, then I create calculated the Eigen value, I recorded it and I played it back. So, this is something you can also do, but then what we do is we create spoken tutorials um, we put in lot of effort, so that it is suitable for self learning. right? That is the reason why I am confidently telling you that we are in a position to conduct workshops in your own college for your own students. right? Uh, it takes only 1 MB per minute. In a CD, you can pack about 10 hours of spoken tutorials. Uh, 
the spoken tutorials are available at spoken-tutorial.org and videos are available for free download. Dubbing, uh, we can dub only the audio. In fact, uh, let me see if I can play some of that. Uh, in this page, I have some. Let me see if I can play. Let me play Hindi. Linux file attributes अर्थात गुण पर इस ट्यूटोरियल में आपका स्वागत है इस ट्यूटोरियल के लिए आपको पहले से ही निम्न ओके दैट इज हिंदी लेट मी प्ले मराठी सो इट्स ए फर्स्ट सी प्रोग्राम आहोत सी मध्ये साधा प्रोग्राम लिहिणे तो कंपाइल करणे व एग्जीक्यूट करणे ओके सो it is possible uh, of course in in this uh, what i have is uh, different other things so so what you would have noticed is uh, our videos are in english uh, for example i played you c programming video was in english but the spoken part is in uh, in uh, marathi it's available in all over 22 languages and um, of course i can play all of this but then it will take time so i will skip this on our website of course all of them are available just to give some numbers let me just show you uh, how many we have for example we have 121 in bengali in english 472 gujarati 224 hindi 200 marathi 206 nepali 99 punjabi 99 49 in sanskrit we have 30 Tamil, we have 214. Of course, for us, all languages are equal. It is a question of uh, enough translators and people who give voice and dub. And the moment we find them, uh, we can do that. Actually, we are doing badly in the northeastern languages. For example, if you see Bodo, we have only one. We have um, Kasi, we have only one. We would like to uh, dub these, uh, you know, in larger number. I said I'll play Sanskrit. Let me just play. See if I can find it. I can select all four categories. LibreOffice Calc परिचयह इत्यस्मिन् spoken tutorial मध्ये स्वागतम् अस्मिन् पाठे वयम् पठामः LibreOffice Calc इत्यस्य परिचयह. Okay. So you get an idea of what it is. So uh, video is in English, but audio is in mother tongue. and it is useful for children who are weak in english without affecting employment okay all you need to use it is an ordinary desktop or a laptop or akash and an earphone for listening as a 20 rupee phone that you get in the flights will do we restrict ourselves only to open source software so every tutorial of ours can be practiced by everyone so for example what i mean by this is um okay what i want to do is this is the way i want all of you to practice if you want is scilab running here okay let me i'll just demonstrate using scilab here let me go to scilab and let me select english let me locate the tutorials because i want to explain to you how to learn by this so let me say getting started okay what i am going to do now is i am going to what i call as unmaximize have you seen have you done something like this you listen to a command pause it try it out on this you should have them side by side okay in fact this is what um, faculty member from government college amravati told me i conducted a cep techwip course mm -hmm. there and they said um it's known as side by side method anyway i'll come to that so how does one use spoken tutorial listen to a command pause it try the command on the software if it works go to the next command if not rewind and listen to it repeat until the tutorial is completed okay so then we said if the spoken tutorials are suitable for self learning why don't we conduct workshops through them okay these are known as self workshops spoken tutorial based education and learning through free fast study workshops okay 
and our workshops are of only 2 hour duration. Okay. Remember on our internet site, I gave you the, uh, I told you how to locate the names and uh, phone numbers of our contact people. So, those are all available there okay. and they will help you conduct these 2 hour workshops. During the 2 hour, you will learn some of the possible tutorials and learn the methodology to use the tutorials. You can complete the reminder at your leisure easily. Okay. We also conduct online tests about 2 weeks after the workshop. This is also offered free of cost and we give certificates for people who pass online tests. And the students learn at a convenient pace, learn using a language of their choice and all can com come to the same level. Remember, each one has got a headphone and they listen to it, they practice side by side. And uh, we can provide high tech solutions to linguistic minorities also and of course, we uh, uh, this helps national integration. All students learn from the, all students and also faculty members learn from the same tutorial from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. It is quite different from train the trainer program. Everyone learns from the same video and about 75 percent of the students pass online tests. So, we conduct about 3000 workshops per year. Um, at present colleges, we have gone to about 1000 colleges. It is likely that in many of your colleges, we have already conducted these workshops. Maybe there is somebody who is already ready to conduct these workshops for you. They can conduct open form workshops for you. They can conduct SILA workshops for you. And now we are going to schools also. There are many interesting case studies, but I will skip this because of we are running out of time. So, we are uh, ready to conduct workshops on many of these uh, and then um, and it is done absolutely free of cost. It requires only 2 hours and maybe in your college there is somebody who knows this already, who can or already conduct these workshops for you. A lot of people are coming to our website, I showed you. In fact, let me show one other thing, one other feature that we have on our website. So, if you see here, you will see the workshops that are happening. Uh, for example, upcoming events and workshops, you can actually monitor that. Uh, for example, tomorrow there are workshops in Namakkal, Coimbatore, uh, Chobari, Virudhunagar, Aisawal, Una, Kanchipuram, lots of other places. You can just see uh, where uh, these workshops are happening. They are happening all over the country. Uh, typically, um, uh, okay, actually our uh, staff member is in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. There seems to be a lot of uh, workshops happening in Tamil Nadu, but um, um, the, the states where this is happened in a big way, if you visit this place, I am, I'm, uh, let me just come here. See this? I click that. workshop statistics. Okay. The maximum number of workshops have taken place in Gujarat. We have trained 42,000 students there. Tamil Nadu comes second. Third one is Maharashtra and so on. Madhya Pradesh, uh, Uttar Pradesh and so on. Uh, various states are coming. You can also go through this like this. Uh, those of you who are concerned that in your state we are not doing enough, please come and contact us. Uh, we would like to conduct as many workshops because anyway, these are all conducted free of cost. And you can also see this, I press this India map. So, it took me to this India map. Let me take this to Gujarat. You can actually see the, for example, 845 workshops have taken place. The latest one is uh, Katraj and then Uttar Sanda, Karad. So, let me take this Surat. It says that where did this workshop take place? It happened in Surat, it happened in this college. Srimati Tanuben and Manubai Trivedi College of Information Sciences. 
67 students participated. So, you can actually see this for your state. <coughs> I can of course, sort it by city here. So, you can see that workshops happening in Ahmedabad. You can see the first uh, categories that are uh, taking place. You can actually sort by workshop, sort by number of students. Okay. Now, you click it again. <clears throat> so, this college says, Chotubai college says uh, that they trained 1632 students in Linux on a given day 18th of January 2012. You can see that on 20th of February 2013, recently in Rajkot RK University, they trained 400 people on C and C++. So, such a facility is available. We are providing all this absolutely free of cost. You can uh, make this available to your students. So, let me come back. I would like to wind up. I have only 5 minutes. So, the vision is there is no programmer shortage in 5 years. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I conducted a TechWip course in uh, Amravati, Government College, uh, Engineering College. I conducted a LaTeX self workshops. Participants made LaTeX based presentations at the end, and they said side by side learning is method. Uh, side by side learning method is very effective. Okay. Uh, just to say that uh, in Government College uh, Engineering uh, Amravati where the participants were in the age group 30 to 50. Um, at the end of it, the teachers, they made presentations using LaTeX after just a two hour self workshop on LaTeX. So, this we are conducting in a big way LaTeX workshops. By the way, all the slides are, were made using LaTeX. Okay. So, I will now go to, uh, I call this side by side learning method. Remember that video on one side and software on this side, uh, do it side by side. Okay, I'm going to skip all this. Okay, I'm ready to. We are ready to transfer spoken tutorial technology to all interested people. Um, our project is funded by NMEICT, MHRD Government of India. To conclude, spoken tutorials and FOSS have the potential to improve your employment potential. Actually, what I mean by this is your students employment potential. Spoken tutorial is imparting IT skills to a large number of students already. It is also beginning to get adopted in universities. It is a useful tool in all skills development as well. It is a powerful tool for a multilingual country like ours. We invite you to benefit from our activities. We also invite you to collaborate with us. So, thank you. Those of you who are interested in participating in either textbook companion or uh, spoken tutorial can contact us. Uh, thanks for joining. Goodbye and Jai Hind.